In the laboratories of cognitive neuroscience, we study brain and behavioral development using a variety of tools and a variety of approaches. In my lab in particular, we study a variety of populations of children, from typically developing children to children with autism or at risk for developing autism, children with single gene defects like Rett syndrome or tuberous sclerosis syndrome, or we study children at risk for developing memory problems because of a birth injury. We have a long-standing interest in the ability to process faces and facial emotion, which is central to social communication. And in individuals who are not so good at that, like individuals with autism, when do they start to show signs that they're not reading faces the way we think they should? One of the major tools that we use in my laboratory is the recording of the brain's electrical activity, which is commonly referred to as the electroencephalogram or the EEG. So we have billions and billions of brain cells and they communicate with one another through a little electrical juncture. And when you place little sensors on the head, you're essentially listening in to the communication of those billions of neurons. One of the advantages that EEG has over some of the other neuroimaging tools that we use in the laboratories of cognitive neuroscience is that they can be used very early in life. So for our interest in identifying babies at risk for developing autism, here we have an ideal tool to study a very, very young child, long before they're capable of lying in an MRI scanner for an hour and performing some task, we just place this little hat on their head and we just have them play games basically for five or 10 minutes. So it's a perfect procedure for testing very young children. It's been well established that children who wind up on the autism spectrum, who get intervention early in life, have better outcomes than those who get intervention later in life. But early intervention is entirely predicated on early identification. Our goal is to identify children at risk for developing autism as early in life as possible. And in our case, we start at three months of age. The way we do this is that we study populations who we know have a greater risk. So babies who have an older sibling with autism have a one in five chance of developing the disorder instead of a one in a hundred chance. The mission here then is early identification will lead to better and earlier interventions which will possibly lead to not only better outcomes but in the case of autism if we can intervene early enough it may lead to arresting the disorder so it never actually looks like autism.